Hi, welcome back. I'm Wendy Brokaw. And I'm Ross Sutherland. Keeping up with the theme of what to do with your family here, right here, and one of my favorite things to do is go outside. Yes, enjoy nature. That's why we have with us Jim Green with the Straub Environmental Center right here in Salem. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. The Mill Creek runs right behind it. It's a beautiful nature setting. I can't imagine a more beautiful place for people to go and learn about the environment. It's great having the stream right behind us because we do lots of uh, work with, with students of different levels to look at um, not only the biology of the, of the stream, but um, you know if, if the stream is changing throughout the year, and, and so it's a great, great resource. Mm. Can you tell us um, how the center got its name yeah. and a little bit more about the straws? Sure, it's, it's, uh, the, the name is the Bob and, Bob and Pat Straub Environmental Learning Center. That's the building and named after Bob and Pat Straub. Bob Straub was the uh, governor of Oregon, uh, was elected in 1976. Mm -hmm. and, and served a term, and he was, he was very instrumental in many of the things that we think of as Oregon today, like mm -hmm. the bottle bill, the beach bill. Um, the, uh, Bob Straub was, was behind a lot of those um, sort of environmental um, initiatives, land use planning, wow. things that, you know, again, we think of Oregon, that makes Oregon, Oregon. Yeah. Uh, Bob was really instrumental in, in, um, in making those things happen. Oh, what a wonderful legacy. Yeah, it really is. What do people, families, get to do once they go there? You have many programs. Give us an idea of what they can do. Right. We, have, we offer a wide variety of programs for all ages. Um, for, for adults, uh, we, we have um, uh, the Straub Environmental Lecture Series, which mm -hmm. is held at the library uh, quarterly. In fact, the next one that's coming up, speaking of getting outdoors, is is uh, our featured speaker is, is Steve Amon oh, of uh, Oregon, Oregon Field, Field Guide, Guide, which is a, a great program. And, and Steve will talk about many things to do in, in our great <laughs> state, and so that's coming up uh, in May. Uh, so that's the lecture series. Uh, we have lots of, of children's programs. We have uh, a Nature Kids. It's called Nature Kids. It's an after-school program. And we're going to see a little bit of video about right, that program. Right. It was so much fun. Ross, where do you see it? Yeah, yeah Nature Kids is uh, for grades uh, two and three and, and three and four. And, um, and we have um, uh, Family Nature Night where, where we go to a school and, and, and feature different, different organizations come in and, and highlight their, their environmental programs. And to just you know, lots, of, lots of different programs for all ages of people. I like the fact that the kids that I saw at that nature class were so excited about sea stars mm -hmm. and they learned not only a, a little nature project which we'll see but teacher Bobby Sneed who just became a recipient of the 2016 Lifetime Achievement Award that you did the Mid Valley Green Awards right, and uh, right. I can certainly understand why she got that award because she did a lecture and these second and third graders were fascinated mm -hmm. the way she did it they were riveted to learning about things and uh, they showed to me, a kind of an unexpected curiosity mm -hmm. about the environment. That's something that you see all the time, I'll bet. Yeah, Bobby is, yeah, she <laughs> is fantastic. Uh, we have two great uh, staff uh, educators, uh, Bobby, Bobby Sneed and, and Sally White, and both are just great at, um, you know, the, they're like Pied Pipers. The kids, the kids <laughs> love them, you know, and, and they, they, they love what they're teaching, and they just have a great way with, with kids and get, get kids outdoors and, and learn about uh, our natural world. Well, and also I noticed um, she talks about sort of complex kinds of ideas and brings, brings it to um, the level that kids can really understand. She was, she was talking about how the, the sea stars move and, and was very dramatic about that. It was really fun. Why don't we watch her in action? Let's do. Let's take a look. These stars move by sticking and pulling. Sticking and pulling. Try it with me. Stick, pull. Stick, pull. How many mouths? One. How many heads? Zero. Oh, I thought I was gonna get you with that one. Good job. It wants to open up those shells so it can eat the meat inside. Now, let me explain how this works and I'll tell you, this is gonna be gross. So I want you to listen to this like a scientist does. 
Sea stars are what most people call starfish, and we're going to learn about their life history, how they eat, how they move around, some really gross and disgusting facts about them, which kids love, and then we will make a model of a tide pool where a sea star would live using ordinary stuff from around the house. You didn't get one what? Okay, it's coming. Did we run out of, here she comes. I love their curiosity, I love their uh, lack of filters, and I just love their joy at learning. Nature Kids is something I wish I had when I was a kid. Our environmental educator, Bobby Sneed, is fantastic at bringing to life different facets of our natural world for kids in grades two to three and in grades four to five. And they include different things like sea stars, pikas, nature hikes, all different kinds of subjects, using that subject as a gateway into larger environmental and natural science related issues. You can put it in its pretend tide pool home. And this is kind of cool. You can just leave it there so it looks like it's resting. Or, if you want to, you can wrap the arms around the clam. So it looks like it's trying to pop it open to get the meat inside. You can do that. And then you can take this home, but do me a favor and please teach your family about sea stars. Questions? Well, someday I hope that they're all good stewards of the earth, and I would, it would be great if someday they would come back and say, wow, you know, I learned so much when I was a kid, and it, it um, affects everything I do as an adult. Yes. You're welcome. See you next time. The next time we have Nature Kids and we're doing bees. Bees. That is so adorable. What you don't see in this is all the parents who were there looking at their children's, yeah. their projects, the, the little ones in arms with mommy and daddy in another room or in the same room helping out with the projects. It's just adorable. <laughs> So where, uh, of course, uh, you have sort of lifelong learning with, with kids growing up and mm -hmm. stuff. Where do you see the, the center moving in the next couple of years and into the future? Right. Where, where we'd like to go is, is just to become more, uh, more well-known throughout, throughout the Mid-Valley and even expand uh, statewide. Statewide? Mm. Yes, we'd like to. Because, you know, again, the, the, who we were named after, Bob, Bob Straw, mm -hmm. Bob and Pat Straw, Bob was governor of the entire state of Oregon. <laughs> So, um, <laughs> and we're, we're basically in the Mid-Valley right now, but, but uh, are, are looking at plans to expand our, our programs to, to the entire state. Uh, for example, a lecture series to Eugene and Portland yeah. and, and, and things like that. So, um, you know, we're also, uh, what, we're, what we're planning on doing in, in, in this fall is, is there's, a, there's a movement now to get outdoor school back into the schools. Oh, okay. Oh. It's called Outdoor Education for All, and we're, we're uh, helping with that effort by doing our own outdoor school here coming up, and we will serve about 120 students. It sounds like there's a hunger for it. There really it? is, there really is, mm -hmm. and there really is a, a thing called Nature Deficit Disorder. It's a, it's a, it's a documented mm -hmm. um, phenomenon that, that uh, modern society is facing. We just don't get outside enough. Hmm. And so the outdoor school will really help uh, towards that. And that's really what our entire organization is about, is getting people outside. You, Jim, have a long history of being an environmentalist. In fact, kind of being an environmental activist in business. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, um, my environmental activism really goes back to my sophomore year in high school, 1970, <laughs> and um, I had a great, um, a great biology teacher by the name of Jim Boyd, and he, he really um, inspired us. So th that was the year of the first Earth Day, mm -hmm. oh, and yes. so really we had a whole um, semester around Earth Day and, and really what, what it was about and why it was necessary to have, and, and it really just caught on with me and I realized that's something that I'd like to, you know, continue doing. If somebody wants to help out in any way or learn more about you, what do they do? Well, uh, I would recommend going to our website, straubenvironmentalcenter.org, mm -hmm. and that shows, highlights all of our, all of our programs, how you can, uh, um, how you can volunteer, 
uh, how you can donate. <laughs> we, have a, we have a sustainer circle. So yeah, straubenvironmentalcenter.org is, uh, will, will give you all the information you need, uh, our phone numbers and, and contact information. I think your science teacher uh, would be amazed and proud and <laughs> pleased to see just exactly where that kind of inspiration led you. Yeah, thank and you. And I kind of think a whole generation of kids now are going to get a gear and go outside. Yeah. With their families. Yeah. What a concept. <laughs> what, a, what a concept, right. Well, thank you so much for joining us today on INSA. This has been wonderful. We'll have to have you back. Thank you. Mm. Thank and you. thank you for joining us today on Insight.